Hello and welcome, it's Rick Baxter with Cost Control Software. Hey, thanks so much for your interest in quality control. We're going to be taking a look at that today. And just so you know, we're all about testing. So quality control is all about testing your items, whether it's an incoming item or an outgoing item, you want to be sure that it meets your specifications and it's good to put it into production or especially good to ship it to your customer. You want good customer satisfaction, so we want to be sure that before you ship anything out, it conforms to all the specifications that you've got. Okay, so don't let anything get out the door without doing some testing. So in this video, I want to take you through what the process is to test your inventory items and spot any non-conforming items. Let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, do a lot serial number testing. This is some existing tests. I don't have a ton of data in here, but I think you'll get the idea. Let's start a brand new test. So I'm going to pick new. We're going to pick, uh, I'm just going to press the enter key. So I'm going to do a little training as we go. So I'll press the enter key. That's going to assign the next quality control test number. In this case, it's test number six. If I would, was doing it for a specific customer, I would put the customer number in. I'm not. I'm going to do a part number 70061, which is the item that I want to test. And as you can see, it's a 17-inch monitor. Shows a picture of the monitor over here. It's a new test. And you can also then specify the um, the serial number or the lot number. In this case, it's going to be a lot number. I'm going to look that up to see what we've got. Um, here is the lot number, so I'm just going to OK that. So that's the lot number I'm testing. We'll just test one monitor just to kind of get this thing going. So I fill in the header part, so I kind of get the test um, started. And then uh, the first thing I really need to do is get my specifications. In other words, what do I want to test for? So we do this get specifications, and it says yes to get all specs or no to get just the mandatory lines only. We do allow you to separate those. Uh, I'm going to just say all. So it brings in, you'll see them down here in the bottom. Uh, it brings in for our quality control lot test lines. I have four things in my sample here that I test for. I test for accuracy, appearance, density, and tone. Now my guess is those aren't the specs that you test for. What I want you to do is think in terms of your own situation and what you'll be testing for. That's what's going to go in this list here. Okay, So you'll put in your list, not my list. And it's going to come when you buy the software. It's not going to have anything in there. So you're going to have to put in the things that you test for. So uh, these are the four things that I'm going to test for in this example. Let's just go ahead and get started. So uh, the first one is accuracy. In fact, I'm going to move the picture out of the way for a minute. Give us a little more room here on the screen. And the first thing is accuracy. And notice this is a numeric test. So that means it has a number range between the um, lower limit of 74 and uh, upper limit of 84. So I'm going to put in a value. Let's put in a value of 78. Okay. So I'm going to put in 78. Uh, for that one, and if you'll notice up here, the in it's now in process. So as soon as you put your first measurement in, the software knows that you are starting to do your test. Now, I put that in just kind of real time. You know, I might have the product next to me on a workbench or something, and I'm testing it as I go. You may have a situation where you actually need to t to um, test remotely in multiple locations in your office. So you may need to print out a, a report. Uh, we call it our testing worksheet so that you can take it with you. So let me just show you this. This is a little report that you could do. Uh, I'll just preview this on screen. And this will be a document that you could put on a clipboard or, or something to kind of go around and test that monitor. So it's the same thing that you saw on screen with the, the with the typical values, and but a place for you to fill 
in the information. Now, you may or may not do it this way. You may not want to actually, you know, have a printout. You may want to just do it live. But I did want you to be aware that a lot of our customers do actually um, do the testing in multiple locations. They move around. Maybe it's maybe it's more than just in the laboratory. They go out on the shop floor and do a test. So there's several ways you could do this. But we wanted to have a, a testing worksheet that you could print out uh, and uh, take with you. Then you could come back with that testing worksheet and fill in the results. So just a little bit of comment about workflow here. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, the next one is appearance. Now appearance is a list. So it's a visual kind of thing and I can do a lookup as well to my list and it is either good, fair, or poor. And notice as far as compliance, uh, it is a zero. I mean, it's Good is um, no problem. The only one that's non-conformance here is poor. I'm going to say this is, uh, we'll say it's good, of course. We'll say okay there. Uh, the next one that I'm testing for, and as I go down the list, notice that the test lines are getting checked off that we have completed that uh, that particular line. Okay, now the next one is, uh, again, numeric, and this is a density test. And these are the values from 8 to 10. The normal value is 9. I'm Let's put in something that's non-conformant so that we can kind of see what happens there. Let's put in 11, which is out of conformance because we're trying to identify any of those bad apples. If we've got a bad apple in here, we don't want to sell. We don't want to use. We, we just don't want that. It's got to go back to the vendor. It's got to go back to um, be reconditioned in manufacturing, whatever it is. Let's, we want to be sure that everything that we're testing meets all of our quality standards. That's what quality control is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, I'm going to put 11 just as an example here for you. And notice now what happens is the we get a little message on the screen. The actual measurement of 11 for this test is a non-conformance. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say yes, just so you can see what happens. And notice right away that the uh, this test line uh, goes to red. And I think up here at the top, also non-conformance is shown. So this test becomes a non-conforming. So if you ever want to generate some reports, a non-conformance reporting, you would see that this particular test was in non-conformance. Also, the lines are uh, here in red as well, and then down here, the actual measurement. So it just, it's just a way to kind of help you identify items. Now, if that was a mistake, you can say, okay, I, I, I didn't type it in right, so I want to redo this test line. And let's put it back at 9.5. And so that is going to be in conforming. And now it's back to in process. Our warnings are gone. This still is a conforming test. Very simple process to do. And when you are finished, with this test, you're going to change the status from in process to probably certified because you want to certify the test as it meets all the specs. In fact, let's do this last one while we're here. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, our 191. That is our result there. So we've done all four of the lines and let's change the status from uh, it was new. Now it's in process. We're going to change it to certified. Notice there is a, uh, some t steps in between, which is ready for testing. If you have multiple people that do testing, like in your laboratory, you may want to be, as a quality control manager, you may want to assign this test to a particular uh, testing technician. Okay, then they go and do the test. They find the tests that are ready to be tested. And then once they are finished, they would change the status to ready for review. So you as the manager would then know that it's time to review the results of that test before it gets certified. I'm just going to go ahead a little quicker here and just certify this test. 
And then part of the process, I'm going to guess that in your business, you would want to print a certificate of analysis. It's good to let the customer know because this could go to the customer and you want to print a C of A um, that is basically uh, signifying that this uh, product uh, passed the test. Puts a little picture of the uh, of the item on there. It's a certificate of analysis. It's got the item, the part number, the lot number, the testing start dates, all the information, what you tested, the test results, inspected. Uh, it's got all the information, a place for the supervisor to sign off and date the document as well. So a fairly typical C of A. Uh, if you want to print a uh, portrait, you can adjust the uh, printouts uh, as, as needed. Okay, so that is the that's the core of this software is doing multiple tests of items to be sure that they meet the specifications, getting notifications that if it's non-conformance, it's going to alert you and so forth. Now, in some of the future videos, I'm going to show you some of the back end things, things that you got to do to set up. How do you set up your quality measures? How do you get those ready to go? How about the conditions, the methods, the testing, uh, those kind of things. There is some setup that you've got to do. Even for the inventory items that you test, you want to set up your standards, your what we call specifications. So that's what you're testing against. So each item that you test has to have a set of standards. I'm going to show you that in the next video so you get some idea of the the back end of the software of the setup and the processes. But I hope you understand the basics here of doing testing and recording the test results. Thanks so much for taking a look.